Welcome to this edition of Astro Chat with Space Shuttle Astronaut Fred Gregory. Mr. Gregory, was the whole Space Shuttle experience overwhelming at times? When I was in it, it was never overwhelming. It was more fun. Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, I think all of us came into the program to see something new and different, and uh, uh, it never let us down. We, never, we were never disappointed. Tom from New York would like to know how difficult it was back in 1989 not being able to discuss your first space shuttle command due to security reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he probably knows that if I told him the answer, I'd have to shoot him, but, but, <laughs> but he'd be gratified. Uh, no, in fact, uh, it was not difficult at all. In fact, it made our, our out briefings and our, deep, our debriefings very, very simple. All we could do was talk about some of the pictures that, that we had taken. Uh, supporting military and uh, doing things for them was um, part of the program that the original shuttle was put in place to do. The, sh the shuttle program was, was put in place to do. And so what we were doing was just doing our part for national security. Gregory D. from Michigan would like to know what you learned from your commander Bob Overmeyer of STS-51B. Uh, Bob was an amazing an amazing uh, teacher and, and mentor. Uh, he was a good Marine, and uh, I learned discipline from him. I learned the, the importance of the many, many things that you, that, uh, you would face daily uh, as, a, as a commander. Uh, I learned how to train a crew. I learned how to make the crew uh, perform to its best. And uh, overall, my experience with, with Bob was, was excellent. Collect Space's own Robert Perlman would like to know that shuttle crews were often seen wearing rugby shirts. How did that come about? Was picking your crew attire like designing your mission patch? Uh, well, it's, it's interesting because at first, the only thing we could wear on orbit were those things issued by NASA. Uh, and I, I think I'd like to take credit for buying the first shirts from Land's End. And uh, Bob Overmeyer and my flight 51B in 1985, um, we had an opportunity to wear shirts that were not issued for the first time. He had a gold one because he was Marine, and I had a silver one because I was Air Force. And so we, we talked about the gold shift and the silver shift. Uh, as, we, as the acceptance of additional shirts uh, became uh, pretty much accepted and the norm. Lands End then offered uh, rugby shirts, and we began buying just about every rugby shirt. Every crew had a unique rugby shirt, and so that process uh, just kind of continued for the longest time. So there were crew shirts, rugby shirts, and they were shirts that we got from Lands End, and every crew trying to get a different one than the than the crew before them. Hart from Tom's River, New Jersey, wants to know how much training did you and your crew do with David Griggs, the original pilot of STS-33, and was it hard transitioning to working with Blaha? You know, I can't remember exactly how long we worked together, but it certainly was um, several months before Dave unfortunately was killed in an airplane uh, accident. Uh, I had then the rare opportunity, unlike any commander, to actually choose my pilot. And so I chose John because he had obviously experienced flying. This would have been his second flight, it was his second flight. I liked him, and I thought that he would be very, you know, uh, it would be a good addition to the crew. And so I was able to convince Don Putty, who was the chief of flight operations, the Flight Crew Operations Division to allow me to ask John to be a member of the crew. And so John came on, and we were still pretty early in our training, and uh, the training went extremely smooth, uh, and uh, it did not hold us up in any way, and uh, we ended up with my favorite crew. Chappie from the UK would like to know, why did you want to become an astronaut? I wanted to become an astronaut not because of a child you know, who would wish, but in my life I only had two goals, and one was to have fun and the other was to make a contribution. 
And I had been a, a test pilot for both the Air Force and the Navy. And I was not tired of being a test pilot, but I wanted to do something a bit more exciting. And so I saw this advertising, uh, an advertisement in Aviation Week that said, uh, apply for the astronaut program. Uh, a, an adult who I knew as a child, I was a child, called me immediately and said, you should apply for this program. But I think the biggest uh, motivator I had was uh, Lieutenant Uhuru, Michelle Nichols, who NASA had hired to, to uh, encourage minorities and women to apply for this program. Well, NASA hired her to go on TV and essentially point at me and say, I want you to be an astronaut. And I think she was possibly the motivator, the greater motivator for me to apply for the program. So it wasn't something I had always wanted to do. It was just, it was an opportunity to move out of testing and then move into something else. Our friend Richard Jerk would like to know what you think the shuttle program's long-term legacy will be. I, th I think that the uh, space shuttle uh, in uh, will be will, will be known as a as a great transportation system and a great capable uh, and and demonstrates the ability of, of humans to build something that provides regular and routine access to space. And I think that its accomplishments. Uh, when looked at, will will seem phenomenal to people. The ability to carry huge payloads to space, the ability to carry very large payloads home, the ability to help assemble uh, a very large space station, the ability to launch satellites and to conduct science yeah, in space. I think it's never been done before, and uh, unless we uh, do something dramatic, we won't do it in the, in the near future. Was the STS-44 landing more difficult due to the IMU failure? Well, we, uh, the uh, instrument measurement unit on the orbiter uh, is one of three. And uh, the flight rules say that we have to have all three uh, f f for it to be a normal mission. If you lose one, like we did, one failed, then the flight rules say that we should come home at the earliest opportunity because there's a possibility that it could be a generic failure and we could lose a second one and a third one. And so we came home, but the vehicle flies perfectly uh, excellent with, uh, with only two IMUs.